واثق الخطوة يمشي ملكا. I still remember my mom saying this to me when I was a kid. If you're confident with your footsteps, you walk as a king. This metaphor changed my life. It helped me achieve my goals and navigate my life, overcoming challenges, feeling like the best version of myself. Now, are you the best version of yourself? We all want to become better. A better professional, a better father, a better brother, a better partner, a better person. And we all have heard that to become better, we have to set goals, to focus on our skills, and to make use of our strength, and achieve our goals and become happy. That sounds rational. Well, in my story, that was the total opposite. I grew up in Syria, and my Syrian father, I had a magic stick that he taught me lessons with. <laughs> Did you think of this one? <laughs> that was not his magic stick. And not even this one. <laughs> it was this one. A dowsing stick. Actually, my father was not a dowser. He was an engineer specializing in water and sustainability. And he used to take me with him when he goes to villages to help farmers make their fields green. I could see how they loved him and looked up to him. He was my hero and my role model. But after he was done with his devices and maps, he would take his magic stick and start walking, making another survey. And I was like, Dad, what are you doing with this stick? And he said, son, this stick is scientifically not proven. But when I'm done with my science and my math, I want to go with my feelings. I want to feel water. I want to empathize with water. I want to connect with it. And it's like, haha, can you connect to water through a stick? And he said, in your life, you can connect to anything or anyone if you imagine yourself walking in their shoes. With his magic stick, he taught me empathy. I grew up and I became a teenager, and I joined the Scouts. It's a place of creativity where I met my best friend, Anis. Anis was a flute player with a smile that never left his face. When he played the flute, everybody felt happy. And soon, me and Anis, we discovered our passion for storytelling and the power of stories. And I, when I could make metaphors from big things into, into, into funny things, he could add jokes and fun parts from them. We write, we've written uh, theater plays for children to inspire them, but to draw smiles on their faces. Me and Anis grew up from the outside. Because from the inside, we still believe in fairy tales. With confident footsteps, we followed our dreams. He became a theater actor, and I became an engineer, like my role model. Adding my expertise with process design over my father's expertise with, with geology, we could establish a successful company bringing, um, uh, bringing uh, innovative solutions to the water and irrigation problems in Syria. At that time, my dream was to make the Syrian desert green. But that dream did not come true. Things started to change in the country. An uprising uh, took our streets, protests, killings, shootings, death came to our life very quickly. I can't, rem I can't forget that day when I was uh, at the protest at the public square in Homs where they opened fire on us. It, this picture was taken 10 minutes before the massacre. 300 people were killed at that day. We were running for our life. I don't remember picking anyone from the floor because I couldn't. Fear 
invaded our reality and our life was not the same anymore. Soon things escalated quickly and became a bloody war where it took everything. Tankers and snipers, they invaded the streets and kids who used to play in the streets, they were not playing there anymore. Actually, the war did not affect the, fi the kids only by robbing their childhood. It sneaked into their dreams and to their personalities. They stopped talking about TV figures and cartoons and games. They started talking about death and talking about weapons. They could know all the, all the names of weapons and all the calibers of bullets just from hearing them. Me and Denise, we did not pick a weapon, pick a gun to fight. I picked the camera to show things to the world. And he picked his flute, sending love melodies over the city while it was getting destroyed. The city became a city of ghosts and people were leaving, seeking safety. And if I found myself sitting in Ugol. No green desert anymore. My new goal was simply safety for me and my family. We managed to escape. We were lucky. But Anis, Anis was not. Because a sniper bullet came to his heart and mute his flute. At that time, the world to me looked so dark. And East was gone, the company was gone, the country was gone, everything. everything. I lost everything. And now, the, everything, the only thing that kept me going was finding a safe place for me and my family. And then we found ourselves on a rubber boat crossing continents. Crossing on a rubber boat was the scariest, things, the scariest thing I've been exposed to. Stepping on a solid land was the biggest happiness and relief. I remember hugging my mom when we crossed to the other side, as I haven't met her for, for a long while. She was with me on the boat. But I've done it twice because I had to, to get the rest of my family. I was lucky twice. I was lucky twice more than the 30,000 people who lost their life crossing borders to Europe. Only in the last three years, they have names. They are people, not numbers. They have names. They are fathers. They are mothers. They are people, not numbers. But after a long trip and hard trip, we made it to Sweden. And me in Stockholm, when we met from the first sight, it was a love from the first sight. It was colorful, beautiful, calm, charming, but damn cold. <laughs> I arrived to, I remember I had a, I arrived having a t-shirt and a pair of jeans on me, and 60 euros in my pocket, and a backpack with old pajamas. And I was waiting for my train in the central station. It was cold, freezing, while people were going to their trains, and like they have their thick jackets on them, and they were looking at this freaking foreigner putting his pajamas over his jeans. <laughs> that was funny. But these pajamas was the only thing I owned by that time. But with these 60 euros and the love of people in Sweden, I wanted to make a new start. I wanted to make this cold and beautiful city my new home. And I looked around me, what's the perfect life of a successful person here? How does it look like? Is it um, a good job? A sea view apartment? Luxury vacations? That became my new goal. That became my new dream. And I said to myself, I'm not a refugee. I haven't seen anything. I'm an engineer and I speak languages and I can empathize with people. 
and I'm going to walk with confident footsteps to reach my dream. I focused on my strengths and skills, and I ignored my vulnerabilities. And in less than two years, I got it all. Life is so beautiful and happy from the outside. But from the inside, things were different. Nightmares, panic attacks. I was, I was struggling with a severe post-traumatic stress disorder. And like, when I asked around, I asked about it, and I knew that in order to heal, I have to spend many months with therapy, and I have to uh, stay at home and not go to work or stay at hospital. And and for for many people, for, for some come from uh, that come from my culture, this stigma about uh, mental health uh, is a big taboo. I thought I would lose my status, and like many men, I showed my strength and hided my vulnerabilities. I wear a smile on my face when I go, as a mask when I go to work. And I was acting my day just like being on the theater stage. I couldn't express anything in me. I hated myself. Things were high. At that time, I could afford a very nice pair of shoes. But my footsteps had no confidence in them. Because my identity was a question. Am I this successful engineer or am I this refugee? Who am I? I decided to help myself and I started studying all types of therapy and implementing it on myself. I've written everything that happened with me in my life on, a, on pieces of paper and stick it on the wall. I wanted to see everything. I wanted to rationalize everything. I wanted to know that things like, can make sense. Losing everything maybe can make sense if I can analyze it. It took me more than a year of processing with all types of therapy, cognitive behavior therapy, exposure therapy, lucid dreaming therapy, all types of therapy until I became a balanced person. But then I thought to myself, if it took me, this rational adult, this time to become a balanced person, what about the 27 million refugee children on Earth who went through my journey, and maybe harder? By the way, organizations that could cover only five, biggest organizations on Earth can cover only 5% of them with psychosocial support. They're left alone after they lost their childhood and everything to suffer with their trauma in the places where they don't know anything about, with no role models to look up to, with no dreams or, ho or hopes. They don't know their identity and they cannot relate to the societies they're placed in. And the societies where they live in, their peers in the society, they don't know about their problems, so they, they can't empathize with them. And I wanted to help them. So I thought, I just reflected on myself. It's impossible to send a psychologist to every child. But what if I can engineer them a tool? What if I can pack this therapy in, in a tool where I send it to them? And I reflected about my childhood. What looked up to me? What insp inspired me when I was a kid? Stories. I can pack cognitive behavior therapy in metaphors and put it in a story and create them a role model, a hero that looks like them and walks in their shoes so they can look up to and empower them. A story can build their identity. I liked the idea, I got enthusiastic, and I quit my perfect life. And I bought an old car, named her Kate. <laughs> Me and Kate, we went on the road visiting refugee camps. I was listening, volunteering, 
writing, testing, enhancing, and I was also consulting professionals. I was writing the, the, the story with the kids, not for them. And I was consulting professionals in psychology and sociology, even professors in psychology in, in Europe's top universities. I wanted it to appeal to them, and the result was Sarah, an eight years old hero that teaches them how to be positive and how to see the, the color even in dark places and to have dreams. And to teach them how to deal with their, and process their traumas to transfer those cognitive behavioral therapy methods to them. The trauma they've seen on the way. And to make them feel they are not alone when they lose someone. And to make their peers in the society empathize with them and, re and, and learn resilience from them. See value in them. I wanted them to embrace their vulnerability and their skills to navigate their life walking with confident footsteps like queens and kings. Then I came back to Sweden and with the help of many good friends I established my innovation lab, media innovation lab, where we, where we combine science, art and storytelling and tech to create tools to help children with vulnerabilities. By now, I am a social entrepreneur who use my, uh, my vulnerability and my, and my skills to make difference in my life and in others' life. I'm still an engineer and a storyteller. I'm also, I'm a refugee and a person who suffered from PTSD. Embracing them all made me feel like the best version of myself, made me a better person a better partner, a better professional, a better friend, a better human. But I still have my ups and downs like anybody of you in my days. But I wake up with a dream every morning, with a dream of a world where every child has a story to relate to and a role model to look up to, where a dream where every child can feel at home, The dream to see our earth a place for us all. Our life is an intersection of ripples. Some of them we choose to draw, and some of them are drawn by circumstances. And only by embracing them all and taking strength from each one of them, we'll become the best version of ourselves, and we'll walk in confidence like kings and queens.